Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well and having a fantastic day. Okay guys, so I have a really beautiful project for you today. It's a one day project. But before I get into this video, I just want to say thank you and welcome to those of you who are new to the channel. I have a few, I should say quite a number of new subscribers. I'm just really happy and blessed that a lot of you are actually taking part. And when you do subscribe, you actually say, hey, I'm a new subscriber and I really love that. So don't stop chatting with me. I really love getting involved and chit-chatting with my subscribers. So thank you all of the newbies. And for those of you who are always rocking with me, hey, so happy to have you back and welcome back. And for those of you who have never seen me before and you just managed to drop by, welcome. Hi, my name is Karen and my channel is called Crafty Quilt and Designs. My husband and I, just to give you a little bit of an update, have been traveling around Australia and for everybody else, as you as well, you're gonna notice that I'm actually in a house, okay? So we've moved into a house and um, I'm going to share those details with you as well, since you've literally been sharing my life all this time. So I'll show you that transition. Um, it was a bit of a challenge, to be honest, a bit tough, definitely. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, getting back to normal life now. So when we've been here probably about a week, I think it's literally just a week, not very long at all. So I will share that with you. And I'll also give you a tour of my sewing room, okay? It's not completed yet. It's still lots of things to do. There's still lots of things to do. <laughs> I'm sure as you guys would know when it comes to moving. Okay, so enough of all the trick chit chat and all the introductions. Let me share with you now what we are actually going to make. So it's a table quilt and um, I found the fabric. I actually shopped my stash for this one um, because I found the fabric when I was unpacking all of my bits and bobs. I'm so happy that my sewing machine is here now. Gosh, she sounds so beautiful. She's lovely and smooth because I, before I left the UK, I um, had her service and she just sounds so lovely. So it was really lovely to sew with her again. I was like, I gave her a hug. I said, I missed you, baby. Don't let, don't let me leave. <laughs> you wouldn't think I'm referring to the sewing machine, right? But nevertheless, um, she is wonderful and she was well looked after. So there was nothing wrong with her at all. So really pleased about that. So that went really well. So with the project, as I said, it's one day, I use a charm pack for this one. And I also use linen at the back, which was really great. I've used linen before, never had a problem, but I only tend to use it with sort of the curls that I know is going to be used in a sort of heavy structure way, not on the body as such. So like a table, um, um, if I'm gonna use it or sell it as, as a, a blanket for the grass so you know a picnic blanket then perfect i use linen for that because i think it gives a little bit more structure gives a quilt a little bit more weight also so i tend to use linen for that also or i may even use you know those really heavy fabric curtain materials i would use that also for it so there you go so that's literally what i do if i'm going to make a quilt for those sort of purpose Nevertheless, guys, um, that is where we are at the moment. Before I go, I just wanted to add that um, I have got lots of stock of things that I um, have, quilts, bags, makeup bags, the lot. So I'm actually planning on selling them. I'll be launching the website soon enough and I will share those details with you. I just cannot store them anymore. Um, I, they're actually literally in another room because it's just too much. If I were to put it in here, it will pack the whole room out. So um, it's in there. And um, so I'll be sharing that with you. I'm really excited about the website actually. And um, because before I left the UK, I usually sell them on eBay and um, that really worked out fantastically. So it was, and my sewing room was a lot bigger there. So I could store them there and still have enough room in my sewing room to sew and move about, etc. But I think if I pile them in this room, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. So I will share that with you guys. So with that being said, I think that's it that I have to tell you right now. I could show you the project. I'll do that right now because it's right behind me. So as I said, I'll show you the back first. And um, I use a plainish fabric with a slight little detail of leaves on the back. 
And what I love about it is I can actually see all the print impression of the quilting. It's like where I did very simplistic quilting on the front. I just love these colors. They are so beautiful and vibrant. Look at it. So it's on point, as you can tell, but I'll, it's a quilt as you go, and I will have taken you through how to do this now. All right, guys, so to make the quilt, we need some, some, charm, some charm squares. Now, I found these when I were unpacking. I totally forgot I actually had them. I've got my little ruler in my hand. <laughs> it's to help me move the camera. And um, there's only 20 in a pack. Now we're going to make a table quilt. And I thought the colors are really lovely and vibrant and beautiful, just absolutely suitable for uh, the purpose of which I want to make the quilt. So um, there's 20 here laid out. I've laid it out on point. So to lay it out on point, all you simply need to do is start at one end. I'm just gonna move the camera with my ruler. Start at one end and work your way down. So as you can see, I started from here, one, two, three, and I just work my way down. Now you would notice that I have some extra empty squares there. Now, I'm not sure at this point what length it, it is actually going to be because I'm not really concerned about that. My aim here is just literally to use up these 20 charm squares that I actually got on sale. Now, I tend to buy a lot of fabrics on sale, I really do. Um, I think that's the most of the times when I actually shop. The only time I sort of buy fabric um, the normal price is if, if I'm actually um, doing a sew along, and then I'll buy the um, fat quarters for that purpose. Um, nevertheless, oh, I tend to buy a lot of yardage and I like cutting it down so I can create my own sort of layer cakes, etc. So in this particular case, I bought these on sale and I think I probably paid about three or four pounds, somewhere around there, five pounds maximum, I think, um, online. Um, it is online fabric store I used to buy from when I was in the UK. Um, so it only came 20 in a pack. Now, obviously now I need to fill these empty spaces here with something else. So I went shopping in my stash and um, I decided was to cut from yardage and I cut I think it's 20 in this one as well I'll, I'll obviously tell you right and I obviously cut a separate one now these are boutiques and so the impression in my head was that I wanted this um, piece here to be in the middle and so I chose a very contrasting or very fabric that will will fall into the whole layout of the color scheme of the actual quilt now if you're ever having problems choosing you know colors of fabrics to work with the best thing to do is to work with scale so let's talk about the prints if you look you can see that most of the prints are either a very small they're very small prints okay so if you want to add if you want to sort of add your um, fabrics into scale in that way you can work with smaller prints of in the in, in the scale of the fabric or you can go with the scale of the actual colors so you have you have your lights you have mediums and you have your darks so you can work your way with that you can also pick up the different colors within the actual fabrics that you're trying to work with so what I'm drawing at is the fact that as to why I actually chose these from my fabric stash all right, so I think with this one, there is little tones within this color here that I can pick up to use with the 20 charms and also with this one as well. Okay, so I think it complements it very well. If I even were to add that together, it works. Even if I were to add the orange, all right? And this is sort of a burnt orange, especially this one as well. The colors really contrast. So hence the reason why I shop in my stash for this particular boutiques here and this one. Okay, now these boutiques were what I used for my summer stars quilt along. So I cut into five inches squares. So what I'm going to do is actually lay them out into the areas where 
it is missing <coughs> excuse me so oh, I did not drop that one there so I'm gonna fit them in there and I'll just put it down so I can do it a lot more effectively so I'm just gonna fit it into the spot now with boutiques there's no wrong or right sides. Well, that's what most people say, but I tend to look at it very carefully. And sometimes I can see slightly paler color. Yeah, and um, sometimes it's either, you know, if it's slightly paler, I will then choose the brighter color, the brighter color print. So in essence, what I did cut, let me tell you, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and the center one, thirteen. Okay. Now, so that looks pretty good. Okay, and I think that looks really lovely. Now, when you're doing a quilt on point, you obviously need to take into consideration what you are going to do with the ends. I'm going to point it down here with my ruler. So obviously we have those on point or diamond shaped ends. Okay. Now you can do either two things. You can just line it up there and cut it, but then you can just waste in the fabric or you can add setting triangles and that allows it to be level off and squared. So again, I went back to my stash and this time I went I got some six inches square so I cut from my yardage or such as say from my fat quarter boutique and this is what a whole piece actually looks like now for this quilt I would actually link the um, I would actually link it in case you haven't seen it so I'll link it in a card and what I also wanted to say is that there's another way of actually making an unpoint quilt so and I've actually done that in one of my videos and I'll link it for you as well and in that particular video if you don't want to lay it out on point you can still lay it out normally as squares in a row and then there is a little bit of a trick to actually make that whole quilt top becomes on point and it's just the way you need to cut it so I'll link that also so in case you ever want to make an on point but you do not want to do the setting triangles so it's setting triangles at the end and corner triangles at the corner that you would have to make so if you don't want to do that then you can look at that um, info card and you will see how to make that particular quilt now going back to the setting triangles at the end I cut some six inch squares and I've cut those squares into half so I have them there. So all I'm going to do basically is then to just add it in. So in that sense what I am creating is my edge here and I'm filling in the spot so that I don't have those ends open. Okay so I obviously need to cut a little bit more. I didn't cut enough. But it's just an example so that you get the idea of how to lay it out. So I'll just add that there as well. Now, once we've done with the side of triangles, we also need to now consider what we're going to do for the corners. All right. Now, for the corners, I think I need one two so one more six inch square so i'll put all the details in the description box down below so that you know what to do if you want to make this is look seem looking really beautiful now for the corner triangles and i'm referring to the corner down here so the corner triangles here still can't see in the corner down there we need to add some more triangles there so rather than use a six inch I'm going to go for a five inch. All right, so I'm going to do a five inch, cut it, and put it there. I'm going to lay the whole thing out so you can have a better view of what it looks like. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like now. So, with all of the pieces actually laid out, so you can see the setting triangles there at the end, and I think the color really complements the tonality of all of. The five inch squares in the middle okay so um, the way we're going to actually stitch this together now I'm just going to show you very quickly 
how to sew together on point. So what we're going to start with is this one here. So remember this is our first row. So one, two, three. Okay, if you're going to turn this into a quilt, you will do the same thing. All right. So one, two, three is our first row. Then our second row is the next two diamonds. Then you have one, two, three again. Okay, so the way we're going to start to sew this, let me just pull it apart so that you get a clear indication. So this is my first row here. So this one here, I'm going to start to sew this to this. All right, and then I'm just going to keep moving my way up. Okay, so front sides together on this one. Okay, and then once I've done that, I'm going to start this one here. Okay, and then this one here. All right, so in essence, you're going to just start this three way path here. So we're going to move, we're going to sew at an angle to get all the rows done. That's how we're going to sew. So this is my first row here. This is my second row. This is the third row. Okay, this is the fourth row. So we're sewing at an angle to go all the way down and complete it. All right, and as you go, you will graduate the length of each of the rows and you will get it completed that way but so far it looks pretty good i am so loving the colors now what i'm going to do for the back i'm going to use um linen and you may think about why would i use linen well i think because it's a little bit more stronger and um, it's a little bit more structure and i think because it's going to be used as a table quilt I think the use of it will be more sturdy than having cotton at the back. So I think that's the reason why I will, I will do that. I have used linen before and it really does make the quilt a lot more structured. You can also use a polyester and linen blend or a linen and cotton blend, which is many times you will get. So like curtains and stuff like that. So you can even use that. You can even use uh, a piece of curtain that you absolutely love. You've got lots of beautiful floras on it or sort of complements the tone of the quilt top. So you can use that as well because at the end of the day, it's not going to be used on the body. It's going to be used as a quilt for the table. All right, and so the quilting here is literally going to be lines, okay? Um, not so sure 100% about it. I'll see what it, it, it looks like because I usually tend to change my mind. But looking at this, um, I think sometimes when you do lines, it does make it so much more structured for the use of which I intend it to be. So that's a pretty good overhead shot there of what it looks like. And I think it's a good length, which I'll measure up for you once obviously it's been done. So I'm going to get started on the sewing. So just as a reminder, starting from this end and working as long, it doesn't really matter what corner you start from. I'm going to show you this corner here because this is the corner I've added the corner triangles here. Okay, so again, the first one is going to be this one here onto that quarter inch seam, and then the two sides, and then I'm going to continue all the way down. All right, guys, so I'm going to get started on that, and I'll show you the outcome. All right, so I've sewn the first four together, so one, two, three, four. All right, so you can see it's separated there. Now, what I'm going to do now is sew these three together, so front sides together, and join these these three. Then at the end, I'm going to do the same and add front sides together on this end and this set in triangle here on that end. So then that row is completed. Once that row is completed, and then I'm going to add this second row onto the first row and so I'm going to continue so my third row now is going to be one two three four five okay and again sew all of the squares front sides together till you have a row of the squares and then I'm going to add the setting triangle onto the orange here and then the setting triangle onto the orange there again once that's completed then again sew these two rows together so by this time you would have had one two three rows together and then you will continue 
all the way down with the other okay and then in no time at all you will have been completed now I said before if you wanted to do this as a quilt you can you can make it exactly as it is all right uh, as your first row for a quilt top and then you can do another again as the same thing and then what what will happen is that you'll have a beautiful sort of triangular pattern in the middle here that will continue with all the setting triangles a different color I, I just, I, it, that just came to me a minute ago there as I was sewing so yeah you can actually do that so you can do this a quilt so one row probably three four rows but do it in the sense that you complete complete it as it is with a set in triangles and you'll have such a nice little it will continue your your on point will continue there as you go if that makes sense yeah so all of these if you join another row together you will still have that on point okay and then you will have a different color going through the middle of of the quilt which i think is look really beautiful i think i'm going to try that actually um yeah i think i'm going to do that so my well i've already started another quilt project but um, I think for my next one, I'm going to try that and see how it works. So to, you know, make a quilt of point in rows and do it as a quilt as you go. But yeah, so far, so good. So I'm going to continue now with all of the rows and then I'll show you the completed quilt top and what it actually looks like. All right, guys, so went ahead now and sewed all the rows. I just wanted to show it to you before I sew the whole thing so that you quite clear what you need to do so this is my first row here second row third fourth and all the way down to the top up here so they're all individual ie they're all singular in the sense that they have not been stitched together okay so um so what i'm going to do now is as i said before now i'm going to fold these front sides together and i'm just going to ensure that i line up my points here okay so at each intersection where these charms meet you need to ensure that it's all lined up really nicely so take your time and line up this don't line up do not line up the edges here the triangle yeah the important thing here is lining up the charms that's the most important thing so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now um, I'm going to use a pin and pin them all together just to ensure it doesn't move when I'm actually sewing together. So let's get started on that. Okay guys, so I forgot was to show you how to sew the rows onto the batting. Now the whole, the whole quilt top is on the batting. Remember I showed you how to sew each row together. Now what I did this is your initial quilt top that we started with here. So what I did was take some batting and um, measured it to the size that I expected it to grow because I knew I was adding borders onto it. And so I left myself some room with the borders and I started to sew on each of the row onto the quilt top as you would normally, sorry, onto the batting as you would normally, okay? And uh, once I'd done that, I then added my borders, as you would, top and bottom, and side and side, which is what I did. Now that it's on there, um, the backing is still not on. What I am going to do now is to probably add a little bit of um, just motif quilting in the middle, or I may just simply do a meander. Um, I'm not fussy about doing anything too sort of pretty for the actual quilting because I think the colors of the quilt and the design of the quilt itself actually stands out. So I don't think I need to add any more um, sort of um, attractiveness to the, the table quilt as it is because I think the colors, the fabric and the layout of the blocks kind of speaks for itself. So I think I will just do a meander and leave it at that to be honest. Um, all over may just do a flower meander or just an ordinary swirly line meander over the quilt and then I will bind it all right and then hopefully it comes out that's really as nice as possible now for the back in I was as I said earlier I was actually thinking of doing some and um, I was going to turn the camera around so you can see me 
all right guys so for the backing i've decided that i wanted to use linen so i've got some linen um that i think should be enough for that and i'm going to use that you're probably wondering why and i think i said because i think it's a lot more structured it's going to add a little bit of weight to it and um, i think it's suitable in that case to use because it's going to be used quite a lot isn't it i mean i'm not personally going to use it myself i obviously intend to sell it so um she says and um so that's why i've decided to use um linen now linen works really well with the cotton i have used it before i've never really had a problem if you've had a problem let me know and i'd love to know why you've had a problem really but at the same time i really think it gives a little bit of more structure as i said and weight to the quilt and um i think that would be suitable because it's going to be used isn't it so I'm going to add it not sure what color it is going to be i'm just going to see what i have in my stash i'm literally sewing from my stash today and my batting has been pieced because i am literally all out of batting so i've got to run to the store and get some at some point but i think what i have used to make up to stitch up the batting together um is enough barely barely <laughs> Barely, so I um, mean, good thing it's a quilt as it goes. I was able to set a, you know, justify it in the sense that it doesn't come off of the batting. So I'm going to do that now. I may not necessarily show you that process because I think it's going to be long, and it's simply just adding the backing on, basically. All right. So that's what I'm going to do, and hopefully I'll show you the result in about 20 minutes or so. <laughs> All right, guys. So the quilt is completed. This quilt is called a table. A charms table quilt and it is absolutely beautiful look at the colors how vibrant they are just so gorgeous it literally has taken up the entire table so pleased with the outcome so remember I use charms for this most of this of the quilt itself is actually scraps Okay, and I sewed from my stash. For the quilting, I did dot to dot with meanders in the middle. On the end of the bigger border, I just did arcs, just up and down. I didn't go over it again. And the smaller border, I just did ribbon candy. Okay, one of the things I did differently was to add the bigger border to frame the quilt top itself and I did a smaller border on the end. Usually I would probably do the smaller border first and then do the bigger border but this time I just think switching it all up looks really beautiful. So happy with the outcome. Just love the colours. Cannot fault it. You really, really cannot. It just looks absolutely beautiful. This table actually opens up as well. But the size I made it for the table is really lovely. So guys, I would encourage you to try making something like this. So from your stash, this beautiful charms table quilt is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, just beautiful. That's all I can actually say about it. You won't be disappointed just absolutely gorgeous it took a day to make and i say a day a full day definitely of sewing this is literally what it took i did not stop all day i just wanted to finish it so it took a day obviously minus stopping cooking making dinner etc but yeah it's a lovely quilt guys do like and subscribe. Definitely give me a thumbs up for this one. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So in love with it. Oh my God, I'm just so stunned with this table quilt. It's just so gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So guys, like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I really want to know what you think of this. This is something you can actually make. Let me know. So bye for now and happy quilting guys, really happy quilting, love you lots, bye for now.